This is the Nike Pegasus 38 and the Hoka Mach 4, two of the most popular daily trainers of 2021. They're both comfortable, cushioned, and quick. But which of these two is the better shoe? Time to lace them up and take them for a run. Eight point five eight miles, nine minutes, thirteen seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty one beats per minute today on a very hot day. Going for a run in the Hoka Mach Four and going for a very similar run, the exact same route. Also, unfortunately, similarly hot the day before in the Nike Pegasus Thirty Eight, so that I can compare these two shoes head to head. Now, before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. I purchased the Nike Pegasus 38 myself and the Hoka Mach 4 was sent to me for the purpose of review. However, in either event, regardless of how it got here, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in a battle video and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Pegasus 38 and the Mach Four. The Pegasus 38 is the elder statesman in this battle coming in this year in its 38th edition. And this year it's got 33 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a 10 millimeter drop giving us 23 millimeters of midsole in this shoe. And now this midsole, both of these midsoles in fact are kind of a two material system. And in the Peg 38, what we have is React foam and a Zoom Air Pocket in the forefoot. So with the React foam, that is a foam from Nike that they have been using in their running shoes with great success. It started out, I believe the first running shoe that we saw React foam was the Epic React, which was a fantastic daily trainer that for some reason Nike discontinued. We then saw it in the Peg Turbo combined with some ZoomX foam. And that was one of my favorite running shoes from Nike. And that also for some reason has been discontinued and so carrying on the legacy of that react foam in the running shoes is the pegasus 38 and to complement it in the forefoot there is a giant air pocket in the forefoot that is differentially inflated for the men versus the women there's a different level of psi that that airbag is inflated to moving to the outsole we have a fair amount of rubber coverage something that should look very familiar if you've been running in pegasus shoes in the past and in the upper that's where most of the changes are for the 38 from the 37 it's an upper update for this year and we've got some mesh material in the forefoot that seems to be nice and roomy still has that kind of signature Pegasus, signature Nike snugness for a running shoe, but there's just a little bit more comfort for this year. The tongue is a little bit more padded, it seems, from last year's version. It is a mesh that's up top, but still there's a lot of padding in the tongue. And then it curls around in the back where there's a moderate amount of padding, pretty much what you would expect to see for a daily trainer uh, in the back here. And it kind of curls back into a little bit of a point over above the Achilles. All told for the weight for the Peg 38, I found a whole bunch of different numbers all over the internet. So I weighed it myself and it came in at a weight of 9.6 ounces or in the low 270s for grams. Now let's move over to the Hoka Mach 4. In this shoe, we've got 29 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop. So it's not gonna be quite as steep of kind of an angle of attack as far as the change in the heights of the foam go. And in the forefoot, we're gonna end up with 24 millimeters of stack height. And the two components to this midsole are that it's a ProFly midsole system that Hoka has been using in a wide variety of shoes. But I feel like ProFly is kind of at its best as far as what I've experienced from Hoka in the Mach 4. And what it is, is it's a lighter, softer foam on top. And then on the bottom half, there is another midsole foam and there's no outsole at all. So the lower midsole level is a rubberized EVA that is not only a little bit firmer and a little bit more responsive, but it also can be run directly right on top of. So you don't need to have any rubber coverage at all and they've gone without any rubber coverage in this shoe. Up top on the upper, we've got uh, engineered mesh that is nice and roomy 
and very comfortable to be able to run in. The tongue is also a little bit more padded than I would like, but it's a little bit thinner than what we saw in the PEG 38. It's also ventilated, but still a bit of a sweat sponge, just like in the PEG 38. And then I would say that on the Mach 4, there's a little bit more padding all along the parts that are gonna touch your heel and ankle. And that Achilles point is a little bit more pronounced in the Mach 4 as well. There's no pull tab on this, but it's kind of pull tab like the way that they have the design. And it's even cushioned up here, which actually makes it not that useful in terms of the cushion here for running, but when you're grabbing it and trying to like put it on your foot, it does kind of feel nice, I will have to say. Another important design feature of this shoe is this swallowtail design that's back here. My understanding of this is that it's supposed to help distribute forces if you are landing in the back, if you are running downhill, or if you're more of a heel striker, it helps distribute some of those impact forces. I do think that there are some benefits to this design in terms of when I'm landing a little bit further back in terms of in my foot strike, but I think also it just looks really nice. The stated weight for this shoe is 8.2 ounces and 232 grams. I did also weigh it just because I weighed the PEG 38 uh, and I came in right at that 8.2 ounces because I'm a reference size, size nine. And usually for the most part, when you're seeing weights reported on a website, they're talking about a men's size nine. So what was it like to run in this shoe? Let's keep talking about the Mach 4 since we've got it in hand. The Mach 4, since I started running in the shoe, has been one of my favorite daily trainers to be able to run in. It's cushioned, it's roomy and comfortable, all those things that I like, but it's not sloppy by any means. So you can take it for a wide variety of runs from your easy runs, which is kind of like the main thing that you want for your daily trainer to be able to do is to handle that daily run that you might have but it also can go on longer runs and also can handle workouts really well. It can even handle stuff that's much faster than what I kind of like regularly run on a daily basis. So if I'm doing strides or if I've got a shorter workout, the Mach 4, because of its lightness, because of the way that I feel really nimble with the way that the ProFly is sculpted on this shoe, I feel like it can work in a wide variety of applications. This is one of those shoes that for people that wanna buy just one shoe, this is probably one that I would steer you towards because I just really enjoy running in it. It's the kind of shoe that when I think about it, I wish that this kind of shoe existed back in like 2010 when I ran my first marathon. I think I would have enjoyed marathon running and marathon training a lot more back then had I had more shoes like this. It's very different than kind of what we've seen like say 10 years ago or even further back. It represents quite a change in terms of where daily trainers are going and I love it. We're getting more cushion, we're getting more comfort, but we're still getting all that same speed and capability in our running shoes. And as far as the grip on the outsole, for those of you that might be a little bit concerned on two counts, whether uh, this outsole without any rubber on it is gonna be uh, a very slippery shoe to run in or whether it's gonna wear down uh, unduly. I, in terms of my experience with it, I think right now I'm at about 85 miles into this shoe. I run mostly road miles in it uh, and it's holding up really well. Still grips really well, both in dry and wet pavement. Uh, and also the wear has been a little bit more than you would expect if you were looking at rubber, but for the most part, the performance of the shoe seems to be really good still. And I don't feel like any of the wear is concerning me, at least at this point in this shoe. So now let's talk about what it's like to run in the Pegasus 38. Now the Pegasus 38, I feel like is almost a paradigmatic example of what the daily trainer can be. And I think there's a very good reason why it's been around for 38 years because it has been able to maintain that kind of like, this is what a daily trainer is kind of ethos. So it's good at your daily run, that easy run that you're gonna do most of the week, whenever you're just going out for a run, this is a shoe that you can definitely bring with you. The React foam is really nice. It's a high bounce midsole foam and it feels really nice to be able to run on. And that Zoom Air Pocket gives it a little bit more spring and a little bit more cushion when you're running on it. So that way it feels a little bit more lively as you're going through that foot strike, as your foot's hitting the ground. It's also got that 10 millimeter heel drop. So it's gonna set you up a little bit more, kind of like leaning a little bit forward. And what that for me tends to do is it helps to make sure that the cadence stays nice and snappy. So it really helps me to run easy and it also helps me to run when I need to pick up the pace. Now, the one thing that I don't think that I love doing in the PEG 38, even though in prior iterations of this shoe, I had no problems with very long runs. I don't know if it's just that the Pegasus has changed that much or if now that there's many more types of shoes that are available, 
I just don't love this Pegasus 38 for anything that's gonna be longer than say like a medium run. So today was an eight mile run, felt great in it. I think if I were gonna go much longer than 10 to maybe up the half marathon distance, I think that I'd probably start thinking about maybe another shoe if I knew the run was gonna be longer than that. But for the vast majority of runners, I feel like the Pegasus 38 is almost a no brainer. The one other thing though that I would kind of watch out for is it feels like a tall shoe. I mean, it's not that much difference in height compared to the Mach 4, but it feels a little bit like a taller shoe. I feel like the React foam doesn't quite compress as much as the ProFly midsole foam does. And so it feels a little bit taller and it is a little bit heavier. So for me, when I'm doing much faster work, so when I've got some strides, I mean, strides are short, so it's not a huge deal. But if I were going to do some very fast workouts or do a workout on the track, for example, I'm not sure that I would love love having the PEG 38, you could certainly do it. No problem with that at all. But it also, again, it'd be one of those instances where I'm like, if I know I'm going to be on the track, then maybe I would pick a different shoe. So with that being said about both of these shoes, some pros, some cons, which of these two shoes is the better shoe? For me, the choice is gonna be the Hoka Mach 4. I just think that it does a wider variety of things a lot better than the Pegasus 38 does. It does it, I think, with more comfort. It does it also with more cushion. And I think that it can handle a wider variety of types of runs that I might want to run in. The only one caveat would be, if I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on some non-paved surfaces, which I do generally recommend that runners, even road runners, get off of the pavement as much as you can. But if I were gonna be spending some more times in kind of like grassy parks uh, or some dirt roads because of the fact that that ProFly midsole is exposed that's where I think that maybe it's a situation where I might not recommend it because the PEG 38 that outsole is a lot more durable and can handle a wider variety of surfaces but for a lot of you out there and for me I think the Mach 4 is the better choice. So those are my thoughts on the Mach 4 versus the PEG 38. In this situation, it looks like the Challenger has usurped the throne and the Mach 4 takes it for 2021. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you disagree or agree, I'd love to hear about that in the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to be able to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. What's going on?